Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for yet another Civilization VI Leader Spotlight, where today we'll be taking a look at Pedro II of Brazil. So Pedro's first ability is known as Magnanimous, and it makes it so that after recruiting or patronizing a great person, 20% of its great person point cost is refunded. Magnanimous is a pretty good ability. It's really helpful, especially if you're going for either science or culture, just because being able to get a lot more great people for either of those victory types can be particularly helpful. Doesn't really do too much for domination or religion, uh, especially not for religion because you're only ever going to be getting one religious great person. Uh, but for science or culture, I find that it actually can be quite helpful, especially if you're going for some of those key great people with science, such as Hypatia or Isaac Newton or uh, I think Einstein's the other one that really boosts universities. Um, but for any of those victory types, this actually can be quite nice. It can make it so that you can get a lot more great people, and a lot more great people is just helpful towards victory. So magnanimous overall, pretty decent. Brazil's second ability is known as Amazon, and it makes so that rainforest tiles provide plus one adjacency for campuses, commercial hubs, holy sites, and theater squares. In addition to this, rainforest tiles provide plus one housing for neighborhoods built adjacent to them. Amazon is, is uh, an ability that can be just ridiculously good. Uh, it's a little bit inconsistent just in the fact of how much you're going to be relying on rainforest, but if you do have lots of rainforest, then Amazon can be incredibly good. You can get insane yields on your campuses, insane yields on your holy sites or theater squares or really most of your important districts you can get really good yields on with, with Amazon. Um, as I mentioned though, it can be a little bit inconsistent just because if you don't get a really big uh, clump of jungle, then you are going to run into a few issues and it also really makes it so that you can't really afford to put any tile improvements on those tiles just because you don't want to get rid of the jungle, you don't want to chop it. Um, but as long as you have a lot of uh, jungle in your territory, Amazon is just a very, very good ability. Moving on to Brazil's unique unit, we have the Minas Gerais, which is a special unit that replaces the battleship. It is unlocked differently though, you get it with nationalism as opposed to steel, so I believe that is technically a little bit earlier, but then again it is also in a different tree, so it depends on different things. Uh, it has a melee strength of 70, which is up plus 10 from the battleship, a range strength of 80, which is also up plus 10 from the battleship, a movement of 5, which is the same as the battleship, and a production cost of 430, which is also the same as the battleship. In addition to this, the Minas Gerais requires no resources. So the Minos Jerry's is an absolutely incredible unit. It is a very, very, very good upgrade over the battleship. Uh, having plus 10 combat strength is, that might be the best upgrade, or the, like the best straight up strength upgrade um, that any of the other units in the game have. I think uh, there might be one that has plus 12 if I remember correctly, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but overall, just the, the Minos Jerry's is an incredibly good unit. Um, the fact that it also replaces the battleship is great because that means you can pre-build up into it, so you can build a bunch of frigates and then upgrade them into the Minos Jerry's. Um, the fact that it has the same production cost means that if, if, you are, if you are going to just build them outright, um, it's not going to be any more expensive, and the fact that they require no resources means that you're going to be able to get them no matter what in any game. Um, so the Minos Jerry's is just an absolutely incredible uh, unit. It is a little bit limited just in the fact that it's a naval unit, so if your opponents are not settling coastally or just don't have much of a naval presence, then it's not going to be able to do too much for you. But uh, on the right map, like an, maybe an archipelago or an island plates map, the, the, the Minos Jerry's is just absolutely an incredible unique unit. As far as Brazil's unique district is concerned, well, Brazil, Brazil itself is quite unique in that it has two unique districts. It has the Street Carnival and the Copacabana, which replace the Entertainment Complex and the Water Park, respectively. Uh, both of these do effectively the same thing, as they are uh, replacing effectively very similar districts, uh, but they will provide plus two amenities when you build them, which is up plus one from the usual plus one that you would get um, whenever you could finish an Entertainment Complex or a Water Park, and in addition to this, they are half the production cost of the normal districts that they replace. Um, they do have a special special project as well. They, uh, they unlock the Carnival Project, which will provide plus one amenity while underway. In addition to this, it will provide plus uh, some extra great merchant, engineer, writer, artist, and musician points when finished. So the Street Carnival and the Copacabana are, they're, they're decent, they're, they're kind of good, I mean they're definitely better than the Entertainment Complex or the Water Park, but they're not particularly outstanding. Getting one additional amenity is definitely nice, and the, the Carnival Project is something that I don't, I'm not really sure how I feel about, honestly. Uh, plus one amenity while underway just kind of, I don't know, it feels, it feels not very impactful. Uh, really the... The, the issue with that is that once you're not running the project, then you're not going to be getting that amenity, so it's not going to be affecting you then. And if you want to be getting that amenity, then you have to be actually, you know, running the project, so you have to be dedicating all your production in the city towards that project, so it is a little bit of kind of a goofy thing. Uh, the extra great people points when finished, though, is something that is very nice, because those are very useful, especially for culture victory. 
just because you're able to get a lot of points in writer, artists, and musicians all at once, along with some merchants and engineers as well, both of which can be very helpful for culture victories as well, for maybe building wonders, or I believe that one of the great merchants makes it so that you get extra tourism um, whenever you have trade routes with people, so all of those people are very useful for culture victories, so overall with the Street Carnival and the Copacabana, um, it kind of incentivizes you to build a lot of, like, uh, a lot of them in your empire, but they're just kind of, they're better than uh, the, the normal districts, but they're still not, like, outstandingly great. And now with all of this in mind, it is time to talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of Pedro and the Brazilians in Civilization VI. So for the first strength, one of the things I really like about Brazil is that they're able to get a wide variety of bonuses very, very easily. So whether it's the yields from having uh, jungle tiles adjacent to your districts, allowing you to get a bunch of adjacency bonuses on your campuses, your commercial hubs, your theater squares, your holy sites, um, there's just a lot of ways you can get extra yields. You could also maybe go for some great people, you can get a lot of great merchants, great engineers, great artists, writers, musicians, pretty much anything you you want as Brazil, you're able to get a decent number of uh, yields to, or points to, or just bonuses towards. Um, and this makes Brazil a very versatile sieve, and there's a lot of things, there's a lot of ways that you can go with any game as Brazil, so that is something that I do really like about them, is that they're able to get a decent number of yields towards a lot of different things, so you're not really locked into any single strategy with Brazil, you can pretty much just do whatever you want. Uh, Brazil's second strength is that their unique unit is absolutely incredible. Uh, it is easily one of the best unique units in the game. It has just such a strength boost over the battleship at pretty much no extra cost whatsoever. In addition to that, you can get it a little bit earlier. So if you're playing on one of the, the navally focused maps like Ar like Archipelago or Island Plates, uh, the Minas Gerais is an absolutely incredible unit and it can just steamroll through people. So for that reason, I think that Brazil gains a lot of military strength just from having that uh, having that unique unit. Uh, as far as weaknesses go for Brazil, though, there is one really, really big one, and that uh, that's that Brazil is a little bit inconsistent due to the, the real dependency on jungle. So if you get a spawn that doesn't have a lot of jungle, or you only have a lot of jungle in one or two cities, then Brazil's not really going to be able to get that much of their strength out, because a lot of their strength comes from getting additional yields from their jungle tiles. So if you're not able to get a lot of jungle, then you're kind of you're kind of just in trouble because their other bonuses they're they're decent, but they're not going to be they're going to be outstanding in any way. Uh, the other big problem with this, as I've mentioned before, is that it really makes jungle tiles kind of dead tiles unless they have a resource that you can improve on them just because you don't want to chop jungle because if you chop jungle then you're going to lose your yield bonus and then that's going to once again kind of just take away the, the strength of Brazil because that is such a big part of their play style was just to get those extra yields from jungle. So every jungle tile that has a district next to it is going to kind of be just like a dead tile and that really limits where you can put tile improvements and stuff. So just because of how reliant on, they are on jungle, I uh, I think that they can be a bit of an inconsistent sieve. And now it is that time to give Pedro his tier ranking, so if you're new to the series, what I do is I give each leader a tier ranking to each of the four victory types, so domination, science, culture, and religion, and all of those rankings just kind of gauge the civilization's general proficiency at attaining either of the rankings. I give the civilization an overall ranking as well, which takes into account other things such as their spawn bias and their versatility, and that rank just kind of pits them against the other leaders in the game and gives you an idea of where they fall. Um, so all of our rankings go from S to F, with S being the highest and F being absolutely terrible. So Domination's up first, and I think that Brazil is deserving of a B in Domination. They have, they definitely have a few things that are going for them in Domination, but they're not outstandingly great. Uh, so they do have their incredible unique unit, which is just able to steamroll through so many things whenever you get it. You can absolutely obliterate other people's navies, you can crush uh, any coastal cities, and for that reason, they do gain a lot of military power. They get such a huge power spike when they get that unit that is just absolutely incredible. You can gain so much ground whenever you get the uh, the Minas Gerais. Um, it is a little bit inconsistent, though, as I've mentioned, just because it is, once again, a naval unit, so it's going to rely on people having coastal cities or anything like that to get you towards a domination victory. But um, provided that you're playing on a good map type, such as uh, Archipelago or Island Plates, the Minas Gerais can be absolutely incredible and get you a lot of space. The other really nice thing about Brazil is that you are able to get a decent amount of amenities from your street carnivals and Copacabanas because they each will provide plus two amenities just from having them built. So that is another way that you can just kind of combat war weariness. Uh, you also could run street carnivals, uh, well, not, not street carnivals, you could run carnivals uh, like the, the project from the, from the street carnival or Copacabana to get a little bit more amenities if you're really, really struggling and you really need that extra one while the uh, project is running. You could run any of those to help combat the war weariness as well. So they have a few things going for them in Domination, and for that reason, I think they deserve a B. 
Science is up next, and I once again think that they deserve a B. Um, they have, once again, just kind of a, a, a few minor things that kind of add up to make them fairly decent at science. So first off, you're going to be able to make sure that you're able to get a lot more great scientists, because after you recruit a great scientist, you're going to be able to keep 20% of that scientist cost. So that's going to make it so that it's a lot easier for you to get great scientists. And with science victory, great scientists can be really important, because getting, getting the people like Hypatia or Isaac Newton or Einstein is really important, because those can boost your science yield so incredibly high um, just from getting those uh, additional yields to your libraries and universities and such things. So being able to recruit more great scientists is a very nice thing for science victory. In addition to that, you're going to be able to get a little bit higher bonuses on your campuses. The fact that campuses already get uh, additional adjacency from jungles stacks on with the fact that you get additional uh, adjacency from jungles as Brazil. So you'll be able to get some fairly decent uh, adjacency yields on your campuses, and that'll just kind of help push you through the tech tree and get you to rocketry very nice and fast. So for that reason, they are pretty good at science and deserve a B. Culture's up next, and I definitely think that Brazil is deserving of an A in culture. They have they have a very good suit of things that lends them towards a cultural victory. So first off, they have those great people. Uh, they're able to retain uh, the 20% of the cost of a great person after they recruit them. So that's very helpful for all of your cultural great people. So your writers, artists, and writers, <laughs> sorry, your writers, artists, and musicians. Uh, once you recruit them, you'll be able to have a little bit towards the next one already, and you can just get a lot of them very quickly. So that is something that is very nice. In addition to that, you can get your uh, extra yields on your theater squares from having them adjacent to jungle, which is very nice because normally, as I've mentioned, it is a little bit difficult sometimes to get yields from or to get adjacency yields on theater squares unless you're building a lot of wonders. Um, so with Brazil, it kind of gives you another way to get a lot more adjacency yields on your theater squares, and that can just kind of help push you through the culture tree and make that a little bit easier. In addition to that, uh, on your Copacabanas and your street carnivals, you have the Carnival Project, which provides pretty much uh, or points towards pretty much all of the good, uh, great people for cultural victory. So engineers to get you that bonus towards wonder production, merchants to maybe boost your tourism output to uh, civs that you have a trade with, and then all of your writers, artists, and musicians as well. So they have a lot of things going for them towards playing that uh, that that cultural great people path of of culture victory. So for that reason, I think they are quite strong and quite deserving of the A ranking. Religion's up last, and I think that Brazil deserves a B in religion. They're, they are at least a little bit competent in religion. They're, they're better than average. They don't really have any bonuses towards getting their profit, um, which is a little bit of a bummer, but they can get a bit of uh, higher adjacencies on their holy sites just because of the fact that you can get more adjacency from having them next to rainforest or, or jungle tiles. I, I keep calling them rainforest tiles. Um, but just being able to get that little bit more uh, faith per turn and just faith output in general is something that is very nice, and it can be quite helpful towards a religion victory so for that reason they're just a little bit above average and I think they deserve the B ranking and for their overall ranking I once again think that they deserve a B uh, they are a, they are situationally a very very strong sieve if you if you're able to get a spawn that has a lot of jungle around they are a very good sieve that compete that can compete with people like Australia or Germany or Japan um, but the only issue is they are a little bit inconsistent because if you don't get like a ton of jungle then you're not going to be seeing those bonuses come out uh, quite as strong, and maybe you might still get a few, but it's not going to be enough to make them like outstandingly great. Um, so th they are situationally a very, very strong sieve, but just due to that inconsistently, I think that kind of knocks them down a peg. Um, but they are still very good and quite deserving of the B tier ranking. So thank you everyone for watching, I have been the Saxy Gamer Review. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, if not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for more Civilization VI content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.